Welcome to another video. You've got Mr. Everything English and today is the big day. Today is the big one. We are doing paper two, question five. This is 50% of the English language paper two paper. And this question talks about writing a speech or a blog or an article and so on. In this video, guys, I promise you, I will leave no stone unturned. I will make this the best paper two, question five video that you can find on the internet. I will give you everything you need. We're going to go over the structure of the writing. We're going to go over what's come up in the past, how do model answers look like, and how you should be writing on the day of your exam. We will go over everything you must include in your writing, from language to vocabulary to punctuation to structure to everything. Then we're going to go over, can you pre-plan any part of this exam? Because you can you can pre-plan 80% of this exam. And that's exactly what we're gonna do by the end of this video. Guys, I promise I will give you everything you need. So get comfortable, get your pens out, get your paper out, start making notes, because this is going to be fun. Let's begin. We'll see something very, very similar. Your mark scheme is exactly the same as paper one, question number five. And this is where I want to begin. I want to begin with the mark scheme, because if you understand this, then everything else will make sense. So, guys, paper two, question five. It's the same as before. Your writing has to be compelling, meaning interesting. And interesting interest is built through your vocab and language. But there's one word now that we've underlined. Your writing in this essay has to be convincing. Why does it have to be convincing? It has to be convincing because the question will ask you to present your point of view or to argue for or against. By the end of your essay, you have to have convinced the examiner of whatever stance you have. So whether you argue for or against, by the end of your speech or your letter or your article or your blog, whatever we're doing, you will have to have convinced your examiner of your argument. How do you do this? You do this through good quality arguments. That is why, guys, I'm begging you for this question. Please don't be sitting on the fence. Sitting on the fence is when you say, I agree a little bit, but I also disagree a little bit. None of that. Pick one side and argue the life out of that side. And this is the first point I want to make. Your personal opinion, nobody cares about you. I repeat, guys, nobody cares about your personal opinion. What we care about is which side you can argue better for. The examiner isn't going to come knocking on your door saying, excuse me, mate, but you wrote this. Do you actually believe this? Put on your exam hat. Look at the essay. Sometimes you may need to go against your beliefs. I'll give you guys an example, guys. I'll give you an example. Last year, I believe the question was about fast fashion. Me personally, I've never really looked into fast fashion. So do I agree or disagree? I probably don't really have much of an interest. But the way the question was worded, it made it much easier for me to say that fast fashion is the worst thing in the world. So I put on my exam hat and for the sake of those 45 minutes, I put my personal views at the door and I argued that point of view. Please guys, please, please, please do not get bogged down on trying to give your point of view. Always give the point of view that you can express better in the exam. And that is how your argument will be convincing. Then after you've written and have a good convincing argument, just a convincing persuasive argument by itself isn't enough. You need to have all of this stuff. And this is where we come back to our mark scheme. You must have a lot of big words. And these big words must come with lots of good quality language devices. And in your essay, you must use structured features. And in your essay, you must link your paragraphs. This word bullet point is much more important in paper two than it is in paper one. Rather than keep on saying firstly, secondly, thirdly, Think about ways to link your paragraphs that make your argument build up from each other. This is now, guys, how you get your mark out of 24. After you're marked out at 24, 
you're then marked out of 16. Now, when it comes to 16, guys, this is pretty straightforward. You must have correct use of full stops, question marks, exclamation marks. Anything that signifies the ending of a sentence must be done accurately. Next, guys, you must use a wide range of punctuation. Next one, you must have a range of sentence forms, meaning long and short. And please, for this one in particular, use and write in full English. Next is common sense. Spelling, 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 spelling. Please spell your normal words and your ambitious words correctly. Don't risk it on the day. Don't make up new words. Spell everything accurately. Now, guys, that's the mark scheme. Now, for this particular question, before we go over some model answers, guys, for this particular question, that is what we need to use. And this is exactly the same as what we had for paper one, question five. Now, what does that mean for us? That means that we are not going to reinvent the wheel. All of you have done English language paper one. And I told you guys to use 10 ambitious words, 10 language devices, a range of punctuation and structured devices. We're going to use the exact same ones again. We're going to use a repeat the exact same ones again. Don't make life hard. So if on the day of paper one in your story, if you used these 10 words, these devices, these structural devices and this punctuation, all you're going to do, guys, is use it again on Monday. Same vocab, same language, same structure. We're going to change the plan and I'll show you guys how we're going to change the plan. But use the exact same ones. And if for whatever reason you didn't use language or vocab or structure on Monday, then now can you make sure you learn this and you use it in your exam? Because the mark scheme is exactly the same. Nothing has changed. Same language, same structure, same vocabulary and same punctuation. So we must incorporate all of this, whether we do a speech, whether we do a letter, whether we do an article or whether we do a blog. So let's recap. Number one, this question is writing a speech, letter, article, blog. Number two, regardless of which one comes up, the mark scheme is exactly the same. Number three, the mark scheme is exactly the same as it was for paper one when we wrote a story. However, for this mark scheme, our arguments, our paragraphs must be more persuasive because we're presenting an argument. Number five, whatever language, vocabulary, punctuation and structure we used on Monday for paper one, we're going to use it again for paper two. If for whatever reason you didn't have much, then please use these from the board in your writing. Now, here's the question. How do you lay out this question? How does a grade nine response look? How do you plan an essay? And how do you write this up? Let's now go over this part. The first thing I want to look at, guys, is model answers. And these are model answers from 2017, 2018, 2019 and 2020. All of these model answers were published by AQA. They were marked by AQA and they were the ones to give them the mark. Now, for each model answer, I want to talk you guys through just a few important things. Number one, this answer, guys, from June 2017. The question was, write an article for a broadsheet paper in which you argue for or against this statement. The first thing you will notice is that this question has a heading, but no subheading. It has a heading, but no subheading. This question got 40 out of 40. Full marks, grade 9. And there's one thing that I want you guys to notice about this. Question five, paper two, has a cheat code. And the cheat code is that the exam board, AQA, in the question, they give us paragraph tips. They give us ideas of what we can talk about in the paragraph. So for example, in this essay, you could have talked about, okay, whether you argue for or against. So I could say, I'm gonna argue that for, I agree with this statement. I agree, paragraph one, Parents, sorry, parents are overprotective. Paragraph two, parents should allow their children to take part in adventurous activities. Paragraph three, 
children should be allowed to take part in risky activities. And paragraph four, this prepares them for later in life. Using the statement, I've built my four paragraphs. Now, when we look at the article itself, what you're gonna find, now I'm not gonna read them all guys because there's four or five articles, but what you're gonna find is the reason they get a high grade is the same reason as always. They have perfected their language, vocabulary, structure, and punctuation. You're not writing a real article. We're not sending this to the BBC to publish. We are doing a GCSE exam. And that exam has a mark scheme. And that mark scheme is what you will be assessed against. So guys, this whole business of, oh, I need a heading and I must have a subheading. And then, and I then must put a box and tell the examiner that that's where the picture goes. Guys, that's a bunch of poop. That is not what you need to do. This grade nine has a, has a heading. There's gonna be other grade nines that I'm gonna show you that have no headings, that have no subheadings. I'm gonna show you guys a grade nine letter that has no address. Guys, park that all out. When it comes to a speech, you are simply following the same structure that I'm gonna teach you. When it comes to a letter, it's the same structure. No address is needed. When it comes to an article, if you wanna do a heading, crack on. If you wanna do a subheading, do it. But don't get lost and don't spend 10 years sitting there trying to think of a heading and subheading. When it comes to this question, the structure that we're gonna use is the same regardless of what comes up. Let's look at next year, guys, 2018. 2018, this one here, guys, got 39 out of 40. Same thing, write an article. And the cheat code applies. All sports should be fun, fair, and open to everyone. These days, sports seem to be about money and corruption and winning at any cost. I 100% agree with this statement. Paragraph one, I could talk about how sports most definitely should be fun and fair. Paragraph two, sports should not discriminate. They should be open to every race, every religion. Paragraph number three, unfortunately, as time has gone on, sports is now about money and with money comes corruption. And finally, people want to win at any cost. That is why drug abuse is so high. AQA, again, give you four paragraphs within the statement. That is why on Monday, look at the statement and find your paragraphs. 39 out of 40, it's got a brief heading, no subheading, but again, it gets a grade nine because of the quality of its writing. Then we move on to November 2019. And this one got 37 out of 40. And as you can see, has no heading and no he subheading, but still got a very good grade. And then guys, here's the cheat code again. Using the question, we built the four paragraphs. Then we have November, I believe, 2020. Again, guys, no heading, no subheading. They were told to write an article, but again, the cheat code works. Using the question, the student built the paragraph. All four of these model answers are either grade eight or grade nine. And you will see guys, a theme developing on the quality of their work. Now here's a letter guys. This letter I believe is from 2021. Now look at this letter guys. The student for this letter got 39 out of 40. I don't see a heading. I don't see a subheading. I don't see an address. I don't see their address. I don't see your address. All I see is again, a good quality essay. The only thing they've added is their minister of education at the top and they've written sincerely at the bottom. So guys, please, I'm begging you. Your exam, you got 45 minutes. I remember guys, when I was in year seven, right? I would write down their address, sorry, uh, my address, then miss a line and write down their address. I would do it so beautifully. But we're not in year seven. You're in year 11. So please understand that we are not going to get lost in all this noise. We are sitting an exam and that stuff is not important. If you, if, if you get an article and you want to do a heading or a subheading, that's fine. If you get a letter, the furthest I would go is simply saying, dear sir, madam, or dear whoever the name of the person is. And I would end it with, same way how they ended it with, is regards or sincerely. 
That's it. Don't be doing anything extra because you don't need to. Now, what is the structure of this question? How do we go about structuring question number five? So, regardless of what comes up, every single question five must begin with a two and a half minutes intro. So the first two and a half minutes of your exam, you are writing a two and a half minute intro. And this two and a half by the minutes. end of your intro, you've made your stance clear. Do you agree or do you disagree? Are you arguing for or are you arguing against? What are you doing? This should be clear by the end of your intro. Then guys is our next part of our essay. And this is our nine minutes where we do main paragraph number one. After doing the main paragraph number one, we insert a one line paragraph. And then our exam is broken down into two more nine minute sections. And in these two nine minute sections, we do main paragraph two and main paragraph three. And after this, we insert another one line paragraph. We then move on guys and we do the next nine minutes of our writing and this is main paragraph number four. And then we end our work guys with a two and a half minutes spent on our conclusion. And the purpose of our conclusion is to summarize our key arguments. And one last thing, guys, we repeat the fact or the rhetorical question that we used from the intro. Now, I'll put a disclaimer, guys, that this structure is what we use for every question. But if you get an article, then you can, if you want to, add a heading and a subheading. But this heading and subheading, guys, make it a couple of words, um, but don't spend too long on it. And if you get a letter, then all you do is you say dear and you give the name of the person or you say dear sir or madam if you don't know their name. And my advice is, guys, you end your letter with regards. I wouldn't even get into the business of sincerely and faithfully. And that is how you use your time. Now, if you add up all that time in the exam, guys, the writing time of your exam takes up 41 minutes. Guys, the writing part of your exam takes up 41 minutes. This leaves you with four minutes to plan this particular question. And that is the structure of this particular question. You all begin with a two and a half minute intro and in the intro, your stance becomes crystal clear. No confusion. By the end of the intro, the examiner should be aware whether you're arguing for or against. Now, this should honestly become clear through the fact you're going to use or the question. Me personally, guys, I would use a fact. Remember, guys, your fact doesn't have to be correct. It just has to be realistic. Nobody is going to check your fact. Then we are doing four main paragraphs. And this is where we really present our quality convincing arguments. After paragraph one, we insert a one line paragraph. Then we do paragraph two, three. Then we insert another one line paragraph. And then we do paragraph four. In our conclusion, we summarize our key points and then we repeat the fact. For example, you might say, let me remind you that so-and-so, so-and-so. The reason we repeat the fact or the question is to get the mark for a cyclical structure. This structure is used for every question five. Doesn't matter whether you get an article, matter whether you get a speech, doesn't matter whether you get a letter, and doesn't matter if you get a blog. The structure remains exactly the same. The only two differences is that if you get an article, you may want to add a heading and a subheading, but don't take more than a minute. And if you get a letter, then I would say dear John or dear sir or madam and end it with regards and that's it. The, the base 
the structure of the essay remains the same because the mark scheme remains the same. So one last time, I beg you, don't start doing your address, their address. Don't start leaving boxes for pictures. You're wasting your time and you're collecting zero marks. Now, how do you plan your response on the day? What do you do in your exam? So for paper one, question five, we had that little arc with the paragraph split and we had our language down the bottom and we had our content across the top. I'm gonna to teach you now how between now and Monday, you can learn 50% of the GCSE off by heart. And then on the Monday, I would argue that the way I'm gonna show you guys, you can plan question number five, not even in four minutes. You can get it done in about two. Let's begin. What you see on the board is your secret source. This is the plan that you have to learn off by heart by Monday morning, because this is what you can use in your exam. I've taken this directly from our table and then I'll put it into a plan. And this is how you plan question number five. Remember, remember guys, we have intro, conclusion, and then we have the main body. We don't plan the intro, we don't plan the conclusion, but we do plan the main body of our exam. Now on the day of your exam, this part should be learned off by heart. The only part we're gonna be planning live on the day is the top part. Whether you use these devices or whether you use your own, I don't mind, but my advice is use whatever you used on Monday for paper one. My plan, guys, has two language devices per paragraph, has one piece of punctuation, two ambitious words, and then I have structure. Between paragraph one and paragraph two, I have a one-line paragraph. Between paragraph three and four, I have a one-line paragraph. And then in the first paragraph, I've got a one-word sentence. Second paragraph, I've got facts and a list of four. Third paragraph, I'm gonna include an interview with an expert to make my writing more convincing. You can make your expert up but as always, make them realistic. And then I'm gonna end it in my fourth paragraph using a six-year structure for my first paragraph. And this is the overarching plan that we're gonna use for our essay. I repeat, for letter, for blog, for article, uh, no matter what comes up, we are going to use this plan. Learn it off by heart. So you should know, paragraph one, I'm gonna use boom, boom, boom. Paragraph two, I'm gonna use boom, boom, boom. And three and four. The only part you're gonna plan on the day is the top part. And the top part, we have four minutes to plan this on the day of our exam. And it is gonna be beautifully easy, why? You can do one of two things. You can either think of four arguments from yourself, you can either steal arguments from the question, or you can do a mesh of both. You can steal some from the question and think of some for yourself. So let's begin guys, imagine, this was our question. Write an article for a paper in which you explain your point of view on this statement. I'm gonna do paragraph one. Paragraph one, guys, I'm gonna say that yes, sports should be fun and sports should be fair. Paragraph number two, I'm gonna talk about how unfortunately today, sports is all about money. Paragraph number three, I'm gonna talk about how there's a lot of cheating and this is the idea of winning at any costs. And paragraph number four, I'm gonna talk about how sports should be inclusive. All four of these I've taken straight from the question. And you can do that on the day of your exam. Now, this by itself isn't enough. This by itself isn't enough. Why is this not enough? What you currently see on the board is our four main points. Remember that you guys, we're doing four main paragraphs. These are our four main points for our paragraphs. However, these four main points by themselves are not enough. A big criticism of students when it comes to paper two, question five, is that they don't write in enough detail. Their paragraphs are too short. Their arguments are not convincing. The way you test whether your argument is decent or not is by adding two subpoints for your main point. Your subpoints will make you think about 
what am I actually going to say about my main argument? Let's test it. So, when I'm going to say that sports should be fun and fair, how are two ways that sports, or why are two ways that sports should be fun and fair? Is more people to play and being fun is the essence of all sports i'm gonna make an argument that that's why sports was created it was created to have fun and have a pastime then i'm gonna argue that unfortunately because of money there's now a lot more corruption in sport and because of this there's a lot more block what do I mean by block? I'm going to argue that sports doesn't now give opportunity based upon merit. Rather, it gives opportunity based upon how many tickets you can sell. So I'll use the example of boxing and how sometimes the best boxers don't get the best paydays. Rather, it's the ones that talk the most trash and build up the fight. Then the third one, cheating. Because of this, a lot more athletes are now taking performance enhancing drugs and then guys i'm going to talk about the idea of gambling um, and how in some sports people are now fixing matches um, actual players to win the match and they're gambling on themselves next one guys sports should be all inclusive i'm going to talk about race and i'm going to talk about religion how football teams regardless of whether it's a national team um, it should still be inclusive of everyone that's a part of that country those are my four arguments. Those are my four main points. These are my two sub points that I'm going to be talking about in my paragraph. When I write up each of these paragraphs, for this paragraph, I will use this. For this paragraph, I will use this. This one, this. And this one, this. And that is how you plan. Remember, guys, two things. You learn this off by heart. The only thing you plan on the day of your exam is the top part. And you're literally writing down, these are my four points and these are the two things I'm saying about each of my points. And you can easily get your answers from the question itself. Me personally, guys, if they're easy, take all the answers from the question. If you want to mix it up a little bit, take some from the question, take some from yourself. And this is how you plan every single question. I think it's good for me to write out a model answer so you guys can see how you would perform in an exam. Now the paragraph that I'll write is paragraph number two. So let's begin. Sports and corruption today go hand in hand. No longer is sports about Hard work, honesty, loyalty, and work ethic. That's my list of four. Instead, sports is in a melancholy. situation with sports is about rudeness and childish behavior this is what sells tickets is selling tickets all that matters got that got that now i need euphoric and sibilance was this mindset blocks and kills the career of many 
young athletes. It also encourages immense drug use. Corruption is the key to stupendous success. Drugs equal better performance. And this equals a bigger paycheck. Why sports should not be about money and instead should be about talent. A pay rise of 30% in the past two years may make some players euphoric but at what cost did this come and there we have guys an example of a model paragraph based upon this paragraph over here let's go through and see how well i did when it comes to my plan sports and corruption today go hand in hand no longer is sports about hard work, honesty, loyalty, and work ethic. That was my list. Instead, sports is in a melancholy state situation where sports is about rudeness and child behavior. This is what sell tickets. Is selling tickets all that matters? That was my rhetorical question with my punctuation for a question mark. Whilst this mindset blocks and kills the career of many young athletes, it also encourages immense drug use. Corruption is the key to stupendous success. That is my uh, siblings. Drugs equals better performance and this equals a bigger paycheck. This is exactly what sports should not be about money and instead should be about talent. A pay rise of 30%, that's my fact, in the past two years may make some players euphoric, that's my vocabulary, but at what cost did this come? And then I end it with a question. And both my paragraphs, guys, address the points that I set out to address in the beginning. And that is an example, guys, of how you bring your answer together. Remember, this is what the exam board cares about because this is what you're being marked upon. So make sure you're able to include this in your response. Now, what's my prediction for what's coming up on Monday? 2017 was an article, 2018 was an article, 2019 was an article, 2020 was an article, 2021 was a letter, and 2022 was an article. Five out of six times we have had an article. Once we've had a letter. We've never had a speech come up yet. Never had a blog come up yet. I'll be honest with you guys, I think it's between an article and a speech. That is most likely what you will get in your exam. Now, you should hopefully be revising between now and your exam. What I would do, guys, if I was you, is I would now go through the past papers, plan question fives like this, plan loads of question fives like this, using the exact same structure when it comes to language, simply add your plan for the essay on top, and then write out a few question fives. 45 minutes, 45 minutes, 45 minutes, 45 minutes. See how well you get on. Always do question five first in my exam. It's the most important question and it's easy to get it out of the way. Me personally, I don't believe you need to read source A and source B to answer question five, paper two. The question itself gives you enough 
for you to answer it. But if you're somebody who prefers reading the sources, then maybe do question one, two, three, four, and then question five. You do whatever fits for you, but I recommend you do question five first. All right, guys, I hope this video helped. I hope it gave you everything you need for question five. Good luck for Monday. Let me know how you get on. Peace.